In the previous video I mentioned two strategies we can use. It's uh, lock modify unlock and uh, copy modify merge. So let's take a look on this and uh, we'll find out how it works. So we will start from lock modify unlock strategy. So let's imagine that we have two developers, it's one Maxim and another one is Oksana and they are creating some program. In our case they will write song. Right now it's empty and uh, how they can work. So for example, uh, Maxim is starting work and uh, what he's going to do? He blocks this file, so nobody else can change this file, they can just read. So Oksana can read the data, but uh, she can't um, change it and can't um, update this file. So this developer, it uh, blocks the file and uh, then he created the first uh, version of the file. So he, uh, he created two lines three lines of code and uh, after that he wants to move these changes to the server and in our case it's the sunk text. When he moves it, it this operation it calls commit. So he committed his changes to the version on the server, it's our song text and after that uh, he can remove blocking and uh, other people can update or change the version. So in our case uh, Oksana developer, she can get data right now or she even can get some notifications that uh, this file was updated and uh, unblocked and right now she can start work on this file. So what she has to do? The first one, she, uh, she should update her local copy. It, this uh, operation is called update or pull. So she need, she has to pull the latest version of the code and uh, then uh, check compare it with her own and uh, update if it's possible. So she updates the local copy, gets data from the server and uh, after that uh, she blocks the file and updating her local version, adding two new lines and uh, right now nobody else can work with this uh, server copy because it's blocked it's locked by Oksana and just uh, this developer can update it. So she updated this version and um, uh, she has to commit the latest changes to this uh, server file, song.txt, and she makes commit and after that uh, updated version is on the server. And uh, when she pushed these changes, committed, she can unlock this file and uh, everybody else or some any other developer can read this data and modify it because previously they could just read data without updating or modifying these changes. Another strategy is copy modify merge. It's a bit more complex but it's mostly used right now. So how it works? Let's check. We have the same program, it's our song and we have two developers. So uh, they're developing their own versions of the song or some parts of the song and for example that uh, Maxim he first uh, finished his work and decided to commit changes. So he, he makes a push to the server and the server compares pre the first versions of the file. In the beginning the version of song let's call it version 0. It was uh, empty file and uh, his file was empty too. It compares that uh, versions were the same and uh, tries to push changes. Server accepts these changes and uh, now we have the latest version of the song in, on the server. After that, Oksana tries to push her changes to the server, but what we have? She started from the empty file and um, server was already not empty it was with uh, previous changes from Maxim and when she tries to push her changes to server there is a conflict because here she started from version 0 but on the server was version 1, it was version which Maxim did and uh, we have a conflict. In this case we need to resolve a conflict. We will talk about conflict resolving later but uh, right now we have such situation. So. How can we handle this situation? It will look like this one option. So previously what we had before, what Oksana had before, it was empty file, it was, was here, empty file, then uh, version from the server and what uh, she 
has on her own version. Uh, after that, when she will resolve conflicts, after that she have to resolve conflicts and uh, push updated version to the server. In this uh, strategy, nobody can block any file, so anyone developer can work with this file and update it, but uh, in case they will have some conflicts, they should resolve these conflicts and uh, then push the latest version. For example, she can update um, in cases if these two developers implemented the same functionality or the same implementation, Oksana, when, resolve, when she tries to resolve conflict, she can remove her own changes or Maxim's changes and leave the last one version which works or just take some part of his implementation and, uh, and take part from her own implementation and then push the latest version to the server. Also, when we talk about uh, version control system, we can talk uh, how they handle history and uh, work with file. So in this case, we have two options. It's centralized and distributed version control system. So let's take a look on centralized version control system. So in our case, we have a server with a repository which saves the whole history of our changes, who did change, when it was changed, and uh, some comments what was changed. And we have uh, different uh, workstations, it's computers of our developers. In our case, we have three different developers with three different computers, and on these computers we have working copy. It's just a file copy, we do not know who did these changes or any changes, what was changed and when. And when we want to update the version, we just commit to the server, server saves the history, who changed and what was, was changed, and if we need to get the latest data, we update from the server. It's pretty simple, uh, but uh, what is the disadvantage of this approach that uh, the whole system the whole history is saved on one server and uh, we need to create some uh, backups to save this server. Because in emergency case or if, we'll, if something will happen with the server, it can, everything can be lost. And another version is distributed version control system. It has the same server with the whole history, but in the same, same time uh, we have developers and each developer on his workstation, it has a copy of repository. So in our case, if I'm developer number one, I have my working copy and I have repository of the whole application. And uh, when I do something, I need to commit to my changes to this, my local repository. And uh, after that, I can synchronize it with the server repository. Yes, there may be some uh, conflicts, I will resolve conflicts, but after that all my changes they will be pushed to the server. What's the benefit of this approach? That uh, each developer it has his own copy of the repository and uh, he or she knows what was changed, when was changed and by who. And uh, after that when we implemented some changes we can synchronize this our local version with the server version of repository and uh, sometimes if something will happen with uh, this server we can get the data and the last version from any of computer we have in our network we can call it this way and everything will work fine